Hi, 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 Sweaty Jen back again. I am so excited to be here because today's video topic is relationships and hyperhidrosis. So this is something I feel is so important to talk about because as someone with hyperhidrosis, I can tell you while I was growing up, one of the biggest, scariest things to deal with was um, having somebody go to hold my hand only to find it was dripping sweat or um, going out to a party with friends only to develop ginormous pit stains that were in every group photo. So I completely understand how annoying hyperhidrosis can be and how much it can devastate our social life. So the first thing I want to touch on is that I think a lot of the problems that we get from socializing, it comes from deep down a place of fear. And I think that fear gets fueled by our low self-esteem. So we have fear like of rejection, fear of somebody finding us gross. And I just want to say right now, um, getting higher self-esteem and increasing your self-worth to yourself is one of the biggest tools you can have in terms of improving your social life. So the more confidence you build in yourself, the more that you love yourself and love to be around yourself, the more other people are going to feel that energy off of you and want to be around you and want to hang out with you. And so um, one thing you could do is really just... Um, Start talking to yourself positively. Tell yourself, I am awesome. I'm beautiful. I deserve love. I deserve happiness. Instead of talking down about yourself saying like, oh, I'm lazy. I'm gross. I, no wonder nobody wants to hang out with me. There's a big difference. And at the end of the day, you can either be your own best friend or your own worst enemy. And the world is already out there putting people down all the time. So having yourself, your own thoughts backing you up and pushing you forward in a positive way is much better than pushing yourself down. And it's hard to build confidence. It is. It's a whole journey in and of itself, but confidence is one of the most attractive things to everybody. The next thing is learning your boundaries, learning your limits, and learning how to say no. So, for example, if you know, somebody keeps pressuring you to go out drinking alcohol or something, but you don't drink alcohol because it makes you sweat more. Setting that boundary to them and explaining like, hey, this is my boundary and I would appreciate if you respected it. That can go miles to strengthening your relationship because chances are somewhere down the line, they're going to have their own boundary that they want to set. And being able to like healthily work together to, um, coexist happily is a huge part of developing a strong relationship anyways. So if somebody's not comfortable with you setting a boundary or if they don't respect the boundary that you did set, um, chances are that relationship will end up not working out anyways. But I hope that makes sense um, in terms of like learning your boundaries and learning when to say no. Because I think a lot of us with hyperhidrosis tend to like want to be a people pleaser because we um, we we don't want to be rejected. So we are trying to make everybody happy all the time and keep them from noticing our sweat. But learning to say no and setting boundaries can uh, actually strengthen relationships in the end. The next thing is um, you could either start a conversation or a date with saying that you have hyperhidrosis or you could not. I think there's two types of people. So one type, perhaps you would feel better getting that out of the way, out in the open right away, get that weight off of your shoulder. If you feel like that is the type of person you are where like just getting it out there out front is what will help you better, like give it a try see what happens like next time you go on a date if you feel like the whole time all you can think about is the fact that you're sweating try opening with it um, and see what happens but at the same time I want you to know you are not defined by your hyperhidrosis there's so much more to who you are than the fact that you're sweating and um, like for me I personally 
wouldn't start a date or a conversation or a relationship with telling someone I have hyperhidrosis. That's something that I personally try to keep on the down low until um, I'm forced to tell them because they're like, what the hell is wrong with you? Or until there's just like a good opening and, um, you know, in a conversation and I feel comfortable and safe enough to say it. So, you know, you could try both. Try opening with it and try try not if you do open with it currently saying like, hey, I'm Mark and I have hyperhidrosis. Try not doing it and see if you get better results with that. Um, always try new things. And the next thing is learning some relax it relaxation techniques so for me breathing is like the main one one that I do a lot is I'll take a deep breath in for five seconds I'll hold it there for a moment and then breathe out for five seconds and then back in and out and eventually you'll start to kind of like feel a little bit like lightheaded probably from all the oxygen you're getting but that's kind of how I know like okay I'm good I'm relaxed I can feel more peaceful and just repeat it as you need to if it would be obvious that you're like in a situation socially and you're feeling nervous but like you're trying to calm yourself down through breathing a technique that I found for some reason works for me I found it in this meditation book that I read which is amazing by the way I should um I should grab it and show you guys in a video soon but so I take the left fist into the right palm you put those both on your lap and then just breathe normally and just focus on your posture, focus on feeling like grounded and in the moment and just observe because like it's very normal. Nobody's going to notice that you're like doing a meditation or anything. Uh, the next is wearing clothes that are comfortable to you and make you feel confident rather than clothes that you think the other person will like or clothes that you think are going to make you seem more trendy and cool. And I can't stress this enough, when you have hyperhidrosis, you will find certain fabrics and certain shapes of clothes, sizes of clothes that work better with your sweating than others do. And um, you'll start to form your own fashion sense based off of the clothes that suit your condition. And there's nothing really wrong with that. Um, to be honest, because nothing makes me sweat worse than like, let's say I have a perfect example from when I was younger. I was going out on a date with somebody and I was wearing like a very casual jeans and a t-shirt because we were going to look at some car show. And I walked downstairs and my mom was like, that's what you're wearing? Like here, I have this awesome shirt. Like you should wear this shirt instead. Like it's very pretty. And I was like, okay. And I know she was just trying to be helpful. But when I put the shirt on, I felt like so unlike myself. And then that made me sweat more. And then through the whole night, all I could think about was like, how much I hated that shirt and how much I was sweating. And if I had just worn my t-shirt, um, none of this would be happening. And after the car show, I actually went and like I had the person drive me to my house to get that shirt and I changed because, yeah, I don't know. I'd rather be comfortable and confident in my clothes than wear something just because other people perceive it to be like a desirable clothing item. And the next thing is excusing yourself. So if you're on a date or you're at a family function and things just start to get a little overwhelming or you start sweating for no apparent reason, which we all know happens all day, um, you can always excuse yourself. Go to the bathroom and use some like really cold water to just let your hands go under that cold water. For some reason, that always helps me calm my hyperhidrosis down. Um, you could also just like excuse yourself to go outside, take some breaths of fresh air, walk around a little bit. It might seem like, okay, um, but that's kind of weird. Like they're going to think it's weird that you're excusing yourself, but like most people probably wouldn't like if you put yourself in their shoes and you think like okay if I'm out on a date and somebody excuses themselves to the bathroom is that really that weird 
Not really. So, like, I think a lot of times in our own minds, we start to, like, overplay, like, people are going to notice if I'm doing X, Y, and Z to help my sweating. But chances are they, they won't. And um, so excusing yourself can can give you a moment to relax and do some of your deep breathing without the stress of somebody watching you. Um, if you're feeling really cranky or irritated because you're sweating a lot, chances are that ending that little social function and being by yourself will be more beneficial for the relationship in the end than if you stick around and you're very crabby and trying to like keep drying off your sweat nonstop. Um, because, you know, like if, let the, an example that I have, I guess, to put it more clearly is I was on vacation in Texas over the summer. And me and my husband were staying at my cousin's house and the Texas heat was killing my hyperhidrosis. This was before I sought any help from a dermatologist at all. And the Texas heat was killing me. Like, I was crying because I couldn't handle it anymore. I was so sick of sweating. I was so sick of having to wear, like, short clothes where my pit stains were showing through so much. I was miserable. And so at one point, I was like, you know what? I really just need to be by myself because, like, I'm being so cranky. I'm making these other people around me, like my cousin and my husband even, like, I'm making their mood worse because I'm being such a downer. So, like, in situations like that, sometimes it's better to just, like, go be by yourself and chill for a minute um, rather than stick around because you don't want to seem rude leaving. The next thing is bringing extra clothes or a portable fan. Of course, my I, I'm always recommending bring extra socks, bring an extra shirt, extra underwear, extra hat, whatever the clothing article is that you feel you usually wish you could change. For me, it's like socks, hands down. I normally have an extra pair of socks with me because if my socks get wet, it, it like triggers my sweating worse for the whole day than if I just like put on a fresh pair of dry socks. So if you're a boy and you don't have a purse or something that you can kind of like put extra stuff like that in, they do sell satchels and I know a lot of guys are nervous to use a satchel because they think it like is a man purse or something but as a girl I think satchels are kind of nice actually like it shows like practicality I guess and as a boy if you have hyperhidrosis like in a satchel you could have like some body spray, extra socks, an extra hat, like you could fit all sorts of stuff in there, like, and have a little hyperhidrosis kit going. That's basically what my purse is, is a little, well, not so, not as much anymore, but I still have some, like, saving items in my purse. And then if you're staying the night or going to, like, a late night function at somebody's house or, like, let's say you're seeing somebody and things are progressing and you're not sure if you'll stay the night, like, have some pajamas that you can change into because, one, pajamas are really cute and, like, they're appropriate if you're staying over somewhere. Like, nobody's going to be like, why is she putting pajamas on? Um, and I go out a lot where I sleep over and I'll bring pajamas and it feels so good to just like change clothes and be like in a completely fresh set of dry, fresh clothes. So bring, uh, bring some PJs, find a support group, whether it's in your area or online, having people who you can relate to and you can, um, feel a little bit less alone will help your confidence be boosted a bit. And then also, you can read some success stories. Like, for example, I I used to have some trouble with the romantic relationships um, and hyperhidrosis. Not as much as others, I'm sure, but, but I'm married happily now and um, to a person who doesn't judge me for it at all and tries to help me. So, like, hearing people's success stories, it'll give you a little bit of hope brighten up your spirits and when you have a brighter spirit and a more positive outlook people are attracted to that of course more than a negative outlook um you could also 
play some online games or meet friends online. I've met so many awesome, cool people online. I can't even tell you, um, especially like a few select really close friends. It's awesome to have online friends, especially if you're not like super open about your hyperhidrosis because you can socialize with people completely as yourself without any fear or worry that they're gonna notice that you're sweating you know what I mean like if you're behind like a tv screen or a computer screen there's no chance of them noticing you're sweating so it kind of it feels freeing in a way like you can be completely yourself even if your hands are dripping all over the place which is great and then also you can open up to these friends online without fear of getting like real life judgment off of it and all of the friends uh, I've opened up to like a few of my online friends about my hyperhidrosis and they are so understanding and sweet because a lot of times other people online are dealing with like their own personal issues themselves so I find a lot of them are very non-judgmental and understanding of like life's trials and tribulations but with that being said, um, if you do decide to meet friends online or make some online friends, be safe first and foremost. Don't give out your personal information like your full name. Don't give out your address. Don't give out anything that can tie you back to like your real life where somebody could possibly harm you because there are predators out there who um, are really good at disguising themselves as somebody who wants to be your friend, but you never really know. Just like a real life relationship, it takes time to build trust and to build a bond with somebody. So don't just go willy nilly trusting everybody and because that's just setting yourself up for a possible very dangerous situation so use um use the internet and meeting friends online with severe caution the next thing is to seek treatment so there is nothing more freeing in terms of socializing or your dating life than stopping your sweating right and the only way you're going to stop your sweating is to meet with a specialist you know you can try all these at home remedies or ask people online what they think the best treatment for you is but in all reality sitting down with a real life specialist who can work with your unique case of hyperhidrosis is your best bet if something's not working they can adjust it change it try something new and like for me one thing works for me and it might not work for you and vice versa so don't just like go willy-nilly trying all these different treatments definitely work with a professional if you're not comfortable going alone bring someone who you're comfortable with um it's like one of those things where it's overplayed in the mind and um it's not as bad as it actually is once you sit down and do it uh the next thing is to force yourself out of your comfort zone so most of the time like I just said we make things like a way bigger deal in our mind than it actually will be so push yourself out of your comfort zone try new things um try things that once scared you that you feel like you're up for trying again because what's the worst that can happen is that um is that you get a little bit of rejection or you have a slightly negative experience you know you'll learn from it and move on the the counterpart to doing something and being rejected is not doing anything and not knowing what could have been and for me that's like way worse is like is you know not pushing myself because I'm scared or I'm worried about what people will think. I, I'm always trying to go out of my comfort zone and sometimes it fails miserably and uh, it wasn't like the best choice, but we live and learn and that's life. It's just a series of doing different things and learning did it work or did it not work. And so for me, in terms of dating life, um, I've actually, I think, had more more of an impact um, with friendships than with dating. Every 
relationship that I've been in, they've told me they don't care about my hyperhidrosis. Some have said they like it or think it's cute, which to me was a little bit like, huh, okay. Like I didn't understand like how they could like it, but I was, I was just happy they didn't like completely hate it or get grossed out. Um, but I've never had like a relationship blatantly say to me like, ew, that's gross. Like what's wrong with you? Um, I have had a couple experiences where, like, the person just seems to, like, lose interest all of a sudden, and I think that's normal even if you don't have hyperhidrosis, but I was, when I was making this list, I was thinking, like, it's possible that, like, maybe one of them, like, found that I was really sweaty and was just, like, completely against that, and that's okay, too. Don't force somebody to like you just because you like them, um that's just setting yourself up to be in a relationship that is gonna fail eventually. A uh, relationship should be equal giving and taking and um, somebody who truly loves you or who truly cares about you isn't gonna just be like completely like ew sweating bye and if they are do you want to be with that person? Probably not because like imagine if somebody was like against your sweating and then you went on to like force them to be with you and got married and had a kid and then your kid have had hyperhidrosis and then like the guy who you got with who hates sweating like has a kid who's sweating like imagine imagine you never know so like just let people who don't like you not like you it's not the end of the world the person the right person will love you for every single flaw and every single drop of sweat too and don't give up on what you want. It's cheesy, but it's true. Don't give up trying to go on dates if you're looking for a relationship. Don't give up meeting up with friends if you're looking for friendships. And I should take my own advice better. Um, I remembered I didn't finish my thought. I think my friendships have almost suffered more because a lot of like girls, they like to hug or even like they like to hold hands or um, like pat each other on the arm and stuff. And that's something like I grew up never doing because um, of my sweating. And like it's just now that I'm kind of dabbling in like arm touching and I'm like, oh my gosh, I could touch someone's arm and like not get sweat on it. And then like also like I think a lot of girlfriends, they, they like to hold hands and I found girls are like way more cruel about like my sweaty hand than guys would be which is interesting but that's the case for what I found so like I would go like out with some girlfriends like who didn't know me too well and they'd go to like hold my hand and be like what the what's going what's wrong with your hand ew 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 and like that's like so alienating feeling for me that I would be like I don't know if I could hang out with them again and like I really uh I want to make more strong friendships I do have friends but um but now that I have my sweating more under control, I feel like this more deep urge to like make more, more meaningful relationships in my real life. Um, I want to also say again to accept yourself and try not to compare yourself to other people. Um, try not to compare yourself to like normal people or hyperhidrosis people. You are you. So like I oftentimes think like what would my life be like if I was normal? Or like I worry sometimes that like other people with hyperhidrosis like maybe they have it worse or maybe they have it better and it's just not good to compare yourself to anybody at all you're a unique individual so like focusing your attention and all of that like positive energy into feeling more positive about yourself rather than critiquing yourself because of other people's looks or experiences or whatever it is um, it's so much more beneficial you're gonna gain so much more confidence and just be a happier person in general 
find things about yourself that you find to be appealing, whether it's a physical attribute or even a mental attribute, and focus on those. Uh, repeat them in your head like a mantra to keep those negative self, um, self-talking self thoughts out of your head. And then uh, last but not least, love yourself. You could even take yourself out on some movie dates or dinner dates as like a way to practice, I guess, in a way. Um, going out on dates with yourself is a really fun way to kind of pamper yourself and be alone with your thoughts and experience new things, um, completely immerse yourself because there's not someone else there taking away the attention from the experience. But also, you never know when you go out by yourself when you're going to find somebody else who's out by themselves looking for some company. And, you know, life's opportunities are around every single corner. We just have to keep moving forward to um, take them and get them. So I know this video, like, uh, I'm not perfect socially myself by any means. You can probably tell through this video. I'm a little bit awkward, but it's something that I continue to work on in my life. And I've been, I've definitely been trying to work on my confidence, which has been huge in changing how people perceive me. And I can even see that the more confidence I kind of build, the more positive I feel in a way versus when I was feeling really self-critical and uh, self-conscious of everything about myself, I was very, like, negative. And I still get days where I'm down in the dumps and stuff, but the more you practice self, um, self-love and positive talk to yourself, the more it'll just become a habit and you don't even have to think about doing it anymore. So that's all I have to say. As always, if you have any video ideas that you would like to see, please leave it in the comments below. Um, if you have any input about your experience with relationships and hyperhidrosis, please let me know. I love to hear the stories you guys have. And um, again, there is somebody out there for everybody who... Uh, I like to believe there's someone out there for everybody as long as you keep looking and you stay open to what could happen. And I will see you guys again soon. Hopefully sooner than, than, than this took. I hope you all have a great rest of your week and a lovely weekend. And uh, bye.